Let's give them a hard time. Ahoy, Captains. This is Colonel Mustard with an in-depth analysis uh, for one of my replays in the Kronstadt. Now, uh, these replays, I'll be... My teammate's dicking with me, but... Um, in these analyses, I'll be pausing like this and going over different things. And the first thing you want to do in any game is to look at the lineup. So we'll do that real quick. So looking at this lineup, what we're seeing is we're seeing five battleships. Now, battleships are a problem for the Kronstadt if you give them broadside. There is some HE spamming cruisers, but it's a pretty open map. Uh, there are some islands they might use. And as far as destroyers go, a Fletcher, you know, you know a Z-46, this isn't ter this isn't fantastic matchmaking, but it's not uh, it's not ridiculous. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, judging on that lineup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a flank, and I'm just checking them out real quick. Um, so there's some colorful words going in the chat, but the biggest thing I want to look at right now is I'm looking at our where our team is spaced. We have a two. Uh, top tier battleships on the left and then we have three on our right we have a pretty good advantage and we have a DD in my division who I've instructed to we're gonna go for the flank because typically on this map especially when you only have two DDs you really need to manage the flanks on this map and if you win a flank you know it gives your team a huge advantage and with one DD usually rushing to the center uh, is gonna help either one of the flanks not have to worry about a destroyer so we are going to push down this flank and we're going to see what we can engage uh, we don't really have there's a big mistake that people make specifically on this map and really all maps with epicenter is they value that center cap way too much uh, typically that second ring is going to be contested all game you're really not going to get cap points and you have to evaluate whether or not moving to losing a flank position to get that center is worth it, and typically it's not. Uh, some games it comes into play, but it's pretty rare. When there's three DDs, that's when the middle DD should maybe try for it, but we'll see. So we got our first little piece of information here in the form of the turpits. Now seeing uh, battleships, despite being essentially the best armored, the best have the best guns, they, they and they should be really good predators, they tend to be more like herding animals. Uh, so the turp having that turpits heading to center is giving me an inclination that they might be lemming training. Now what's wrong, what's the bad part about a lemming train? And I even see our team maybe threatening to do the exact same thing, start a lemming train. The problem with the lemming train is that it's, it's an, it, the tactic doesn't work if the lemming train stops, because then you get cover. Now I take a pot shot, I don't really know what else is over there, so I took a pot shot where I think I might be undetected if they're not holding the flank. I know for certain right at this moment that they have nothing outside uh, to my right. They are not sending any ships over there to really oppose uh, this flank, so I go ahead and make the decision to start pushing in. A Turpitz isn't a massive threat, but a Cleveland is a pretty good target. You tend to get a lot of overpens because the penetration on these guns is really high. But it, it's still worth going for because you can still, you know, get some decent damage. Now my DD is smoked up. I think he forgot that Cleveland's on radar now. This is like the day of, after the patch. So there's a nice big hit on the Cleveland. The Kronstadt really can punish broadsides. Sometimes it can be a little trollish, but... More often than not, if you, if you aim well, you get good good hits in. Now, a lot of pe mistakes people make with the Kronstadt is they don't utilize its great armor belt. And by great, I mean, if angled, it's fantastic. But the second you give broadside, you get punished. You are a massive target. Now, I'm still a little worried about a DD here. Um, but I'm going to use the smoke to turn out so that I am not giving broadside wall possibly seen and potentially blip because that Frederick de Grove was was spotted 
and he would be in a position to maybe punish me. It is a Frederick. It's not the most accurate ship, but I don't really want to take risks. It looks like our team is mobilizing at this point. All right, so now we know where the Fletcher is. And now I'm thinking, okay, there's might be Torps. I'm spotted. I'm broadside. And I get undetected, which is good for me. Take some shots at this clear. Rocks are gonna block some of those probably, but it doesn't matter. He's dead. Alright, so I'm gonna pause it again. So now I've pretty much confirmed that their team is in fact lemming trading right into a Misashi in Missouri, which is a tough thing to lemming train into. Because that Misashi overmatches everything on the map, including their other Misashi. But now we have a Fletcher, and right now I'm thinking I need to keep an island lane between me and this Fletcher so he can't tour. But as I zoom in, which I'll do in a second, you'll see that this Fletcher isn't in a position to do anything. So now I pop my first radar. I want to take care of this Fletcher. I think he's backing up uh, to get behind the island, which actually would have probably been the best choice for him, but he decides instead, I'm gonna dart out. And there's a wreck in front of him, so I'm not really worried about Torps at all at this point. Those Torps would literally get stopped. I'm trying to get one more shot off before he gets behind that island. And I'm rewarded with a pretty healthy hit there. Now, if you notice where that Fletcher's going, he's diving directly into a buffalo and another Fletcher. So, that big hit that he just took, he ain't long for this one. And now I see we have a huge advantage here. We have uh, massive ships. Our ships are effectively stopped them. And now we can just roll in and do the pincer that is essentially why lemming trains don't work. This will, if your lemming train stops, this is what this is what's gonna happen. This is a fairly easy game. I switched to AG. Uh, maybe get some fires, do some harassment as my team gets in position to force these guys to angle or team on the other side starts to force these guys to hang. I think I just fired the Donskoy, not real, because I usually, once I fire an HE Salvo, I almost always switch to AP. Generally speaking, the Kronstadt's guns, even when firing at DDs, you stick with AP. The HE damage is pretty sad, and your DDs, unless you're really close, you tend not to get many hits, so trying to get at least one full pen is usually good idea so now our team my division's kind of completely pushing them back and now I'm getting into a place where I need to maybe start managing my engagement range uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to slow down soon uh, because I don't want to get to a point where I do not have the option to disengage or at least go dark for a little bit if I start getting really fun. I will put a note here, we don't really have eyes on anything except these three ships, but there's a ton of ships there. Now with the Frederick de Grobe and the Bismarck behind us are doing, I, I couldn't even hazard to guess. Um, you know, you pick probably one of the best brawling ships, a flank opens up and you should be, you should be rocking that as hard as you can, especially since all their DDs are dead. These guys should be playing very aggressive, but they're not. And they won't for the rest of the game. So I'm seeing the Bismarck, I give it a little HE dump, I'm thinking if I get a fire as it goes around that island, maybe we'll be good, but again, the HE damage is kinda, it, I mean it's good for the caliber it is, but you don't get, you tend not to get a ton of it. See this Donskoy, I think he's in, he's in a turn right now, take a shot, see if I can clip him hard. And at this point, where I'm just pushing, now I am keeping right here, there's that gap where the Buffalo, Kronstadt, and uh, I believe that's in Iowa are. I'm keeping that in mind. Since a lot of our other ships are hiding behind islands, I'm giving a pretty sweet broadside to them, and I notice it. But none of their guns are pointed toward me. I do get a Citadel on that. Uh, I'm thinking about shooting this Kronstadt, and I do, but I, I wasn't very confident in that. Notice how I've slowed down. Now, why did I slow down here? Notice my con uh, with my concealment, is uh, about 12.5. Right now, the newer the rune is the only thing that's going to keep me from disengaging if I have to. Generally, if you want to know what engagement range you want to sit at, uh, you want to uh, use your concealment as your 
where you want to engage if you don't have an advantage. So this is actually a pretty good position. I got some good broadside shots on ships. The rune is going to harass me a little bit, but I'm not too concerned. I am running more of a tank build on this, so I don't really worry about a single fire. Don't really get the damage I wanted on that, but it did bump up on my on that, set, on that follow up. So now the rune is kind of making a mistake. He's giving me broadside. I see that he's starting to turn out, so I am a little higher, hoping to get more pens than citadels. And I get, I think I aimed, a, I think he was moving a little slower than I thought he was. I think he cut his speed. The rune is still the biggest threat to me and my team, specifically Bar Udaloy. Chunk him down a bit, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, they're 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 gonna they're gonna either rush our the back end of our Musashi, they're gonna do something. So I need to start flipping people as much as possible. I knew those storms were gonna hit because I managed my uh, distance, and at this point, we kind of have them surrounded. The Donskoy is coming up behind that Musashi, and this Kronstadt is gonna give you way too much broadside. He was, this is how you don't play a crunch time. Although he is in a bad situation, I will give him that. He really couldn't angle against anything because we have a crossfire. And that's what's great about covering your flanks, is you have crossfires. Uh, when you lemming train, you don't, you don't have any crossfires. You eliminate that possibility and you essentially have to brute force your way through things. And as you can see, that really is, and I'm looking back at the Bismarck and Fred going, what the hell are they doing? So now this rune's getting a little annoying for me. And I think I'm going to take a little couple shots at him. Because he is keeping our Udaloy from being more aggressive. And then I noticed the I, I was turning his guns to me, so I immediately start angling. I heal up because I think a big hit's coming. I think he's going for me. Uh, but then he turns and turns away, and now I'm all, if I if I see him if I see him try to go for me, if that number goes up any higher. I know I need to angle a little. This isn't enough of an angle to really gain much damage. One thing the Kronstadt does have is amazing firing angles. I think that Frederick is going to be going broadside or broadside to me soon to angle against the Misashi, so I'm kind of keeping myself the angle side, so the option of hitting this Frederick at the risk of taking some Iowa hit. So what I'm aiming for is right in front of that back turret because that's the, the, probably the flattest surface and that's what's getting me these big pens. If I aim too far to the front, they're just going to bounce. The angles are a little finicky on the ship so you have to know and kind of evaluate what the flattest part of the ship is. He's angling in on me so I aim a little higher. Don't really get much. Should have aimed a little more higher. Rune's still being an issue for my team, so I'm looking to shoot him, but then he goes down. Frederick really never, never gave me that broadside, and I needed to kill that Iowa. So now, at this point, this game's over. I mean, their lemming train completely failed. Our Frederick back there is... Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing. I don't think he got the memo that we're winning. But now I'm just farming damage at this point. And the rest of the game is just essentially me farming damage. That, Iowa looks like he's about to give me broadside, so I aim a little lower, and I'm rewarded with a triple citadel. And these guns are very powerful. I mean, battleships are a big threat to you if they want to shoot you. Um, but you're just, if they give broadside, you're just as big of a threat. Maybe not as big as another battleship, but very close. And these shells do hurt. And they're about as accurate. I would say they have the similar gunnery to maybe a Yamato. I mean, the shells don't feel as heavy, if that makes sense. Um, like in the air. But as far as the accuracy and where they land, it's similar to uh, Yamato, maybe in Iowa. I would say it's probably closer to an Iowa's accuracy, but they move a lot faster, so they're not the loftiness of an, of an Iowa. And at this point, I'm just farming. Our smoked up to farm some damage, but, you know, me pretty much deleting that Iowa kind of negated any damage he would do. Right now I'm trying to get a fire to maybe get some extra damage that way and then switch back to AP. 
And when you do hit with the HD, it does do a decent amount of damage against angled targets. I have gotten an arsonist on this thing on a bow in Iowa who repaired my first fire. I lit three and then just ignored it. Mainly because I didn't have any other target good enough for AP. Everything else was running away or angled. I probably won't show that. I probably won't do an in-depth analysis of that game. And I'm realizing pretty pretty quickly this game might end before I even get to hit anything else. So, and there, that's the end of the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it.